best bites forever. Hi everyone, it's Chef Alicia and today I'm going to make an apple pie with a crumb topping for you. So let's get started with some apples, which by the way we picked at an orchard which was really cool. So back to the apples. I have a few Granny Smith here and a Rome Beauty also. I like to use a variety of apples when I make my pie. I don't always use these particular kinds, but I do always include Granny Smith because they are great for baking apple pie. They hold their shape really well and they keep just a tiny bit of crispness in the pie. So go ahead and peel all of your apples and then we're going to cut them up. Start by cutting it in half and then turn it and cut it in half again so that you end up with four equal pieces. And then we need to take out that little core that's in the middle right there. So there's a really easy way to do this and all you have to do is lay it on your cutting board and cut it off at an angle. So there's one of them and I'm going to show you one more time just like that. Cut it at an angle and remove that little core. Once you get all of the cores removed, slice your apple into quarter inch thick slices. Try to get them as even as you can. They should look about like this. And you want them even so that when you bake them, they bake evenly. And we're looking to have five cups of sliced apples when you're all done. Now we're going to move on to our filling. And we're going to start with a half a cup of sugar. And I have my little helper helping me. Thank you. And one teaspoon of cinnamon along with one quarter of a cup of AP flour. That's the all-purpose flour. Okay, thank you helper, bye bye, we'll see you later. And now I'm going to stir those ingredients up until they're nice and combined. We want them to be evenly combined so that when we sprinkle them over the apples, you don't get like one very sugary apple and then one real floury apple. So stir those ingredients together and then sprinkle them over top of your sliced apples. After you sprinkle them over top of your sliced apples, stir up the apples and make sure that you're stirring kind of from the bottom because that flour and sugar, it kind of likes to find its way into the bottom of the bowl. And then when you go to add your apples into your pan, you're going to have this big pile of flour that's going to be on top. So just stir from the bottom. Next, we're going to make the topping. So I have a new little helper and we're going to start with a half of a cup of brown sugar. And the next thing that we are going to measure is going to be one cup of AP flour and we are just going to add that in right on top of the brown sugar and again this is for our crumb topping that's what we're making next is one teaspoon of cinnamon and you can adjust the spices to your own flavor but I like mine spicy so we're also going to add three quarters of a teaspoon of nutmeg along with one half teaspoon of cardamom which happens to be one of my very favorite spices in the world and thank you very much little helper okay so now we are going to stir that up again so that we have an even consistency and if you have any little brown sugar lumps in there just kind of mash them down with your spoon it's not a good thing to have the lumps in there to this I'm adding one half of a cup of butter and I sliced this into slices before I dumped it into the bowl just to kind of make it easier to work with and then I'm going to stir it a little to give it a coat of flour and I'm using a fork here which is just fine but if you have a pastry blender that'll work even better I happen to be on vacation in a hotel right now so believe it or not I did not pack my pastry blender go figure so I'm using a fork it's cool but this is the consistency that we're looking for it should kind of be like cornmeal with big chunks of butter covered in goodness so like pea sized chunks. The next thing that I'm doing is I'm adding my apples into my pie crust and this pie crust happens to be a store bought one which I usually make them homemade but again I am at a hotel and I didn't bring my rolling pin so I'm using a store bought one and this is a pretty yummy one anyway but anyway I'm just kind of mushing my apples down in there a little you don't want to pack them in really tight they do need some air space to cook and to steam and their liquids gonna kind of come out of them but you also don't want to have a lot of holes like big air spaces because those are places where your pie can kind of collapse and then it doesn't look as pretty when it's done you get like the dents in the top of your pie and it's just not a very pretty thing so I'm just kind of filling in the little holes. You can see me. I'm a little bit crazy, I guess, when it comes to this. 
but go through, place your apples, and I normally bake with a 9 inch deep shell when I'm at home, so this is kind of going to be a nice big mound of apples on top, which is very delicious, and it's fine, and we're going to make it work. So I'm going to pile my apples right on top in a nice little mound, don't they look delicious? And then we're going to put that beautiful crumb topping right on top. So I'm just going to be kind of careful here because like I said, I do have a nice little mound of apples going on, but they are going to cook down. Nobody worry about my apple pie, it's going to be gorgeous. And I'm just going to gently place this crumb topping using my hand and kind of slowly going instead of just dumping it all on the top. And once I get it all settled on there, I'm going to bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes to an hour. So there it is, ready to go in the oven, and there it is out of the oven, and there it is ready to eat. And just for fun, here are a couple more pictures from the apple orchard. We had a really great day. If you would like this recipe or any of my others, you can visit me at bestbitesforever.com. Thank you so much for watching, and happy cooking, everyone. Best. Bites forever dot com.